All right, it's physics reaction video number 98. Uh, good morning, everybody. Today we have um, something called Intro Physics Lecture 2, Units and Uncertainties. Um, my guess is based on the structure of this that this is probably a college course. Uh, not sure. And, oh, it's in, it's in the United Kingdom, so that's interesting. We'll see how it goes. All right, everybody. Uh, good to see everyone here. I'm sorry about the bit of the delay getting started, but we got there eventually. Okay. <laughs> so, um, as you can see... All right, so the assumption is that's a live lecture that was also then recorded. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see if there's any pieces that really aren't meant for the video, interactions, or things we can't see, although it's pretty good framing. Uh, we certainly see three chalkboards, which I'm guessing is actually six. Well, um, this is probably a display. And so these chalkboards look like they go up. So one, two, three, four, five chalkboards, and at least one display. So it's pretty good. I'm not sure what this does. So. Well, let me, let me just try it on the phone here. <laughs> Oops. Come on. Oh, it says attendance. What happens if I go to it? Oh, you sign in and then must mark your attendance. Oh, that's pretty cool. All righty, here we go. Um, the subject for today, it's all about uh, units and uncertainties. So we saw last time a little bit about the kind of extra things that we have to add on to numbers whenever we're considering them as scientific measurements. So just quickly, uh, more on the setup. Notice that he's got a lapel or a whatever you call this kind of microphone here, um, which is picking things up really nicely. And of course, it, it you know it's not counting on the, the microphone way in the back in the camera. What's especially good about that from student privacy perspective is if, if students ask any questions, we're probably not going to hear them. But that's probably how you want to typically do these videos. So very cool. So we have to think about the number of significant digits. Mm. And mm. very often, it's useful to put the numbers in what we call standard form there, where we have that mantis of the number between one and 10, and then we've got the power there. So that's what we did last time. And this week, the focus is these two extra things that we need to kind of team up with these numbers. So we need to add in some units and some uncertainties. So if the camera's definitely moving. I assume it's a person. It's possible it's one of those automated things, but it seems to me that if it were automated, he would be dead center. Because there's those cameras that if you can wear a device, it'll just track you all the time. Since he's not dead centered, I'm going to assume this is a person uh, who's, who's running the camera. To really make it a scientific measurement. So that's what the lecture's all about today. Let's take a look at what's on the menu for today. So. Cool. The plan is to start with, uh, we're going to think about errors and uncertainties. Ah, nice. We're also going to look at um, accuracy and precision. And that's what we need to think about for the time being, about uncertainty, accuracy, and precision in scientific values. So from there, we're going to turn our attention to uh, units. And once we get to units, uh, there's a situation. So I just noticed these, uh, looks like somebody took the time to put markers in the video. Let's see if this is being picked up. Oh, my camera's in the way. So you see these little markers here. Um, so we could we could maybe go to what we want to get to. Uh, let's see, accuracy, precision, random and systematic uncertainties, systems of units, types of units, prefixes, history of units. I think I'm interested in a mix up with milligrams. Let's go to that. All right, here we go. Now you might say, okay, well, uh, maybe I don't want to send the spacecraft to Mars. That's all kind of very long way away in my kind of day-to-day -day staff, in my studies. Is that really going to uh, be so important? <laughs> so I'd like to share one more story where units got mixed up. So this was a... a um, story just back from 2015 in Northumbria University. So really not a million miles away. <laughs> and the study involved a couple of sports science students. I think they were in their third year. 
Has anybody heard of this study before? Okay, well, let's see what happens. So the study was on the effects of caffeine, about 300 milligrams. So a fairly a substantial amount of caffeine, but not a, not a ridiculous amount. So the idea was these two students, they were going to take this caffeine and see what happened, see what, how their physiology was affected. What actually happened instead, uh, so they quoted, they were given 30 grams of caffeine instead of 0 0.3. So again, like I said, you might say, well, SI prefix is not such a big deal. What's that little M? But clearly, you know, you don't have to be a chemistry student to see that that's a considerable amount of caffeine. There's another really interesting quote from this story that I'd like to emphasize. So it's this. The calculation had been done on a mobile phone with the decimal point <laughs> in the... <laughs> that's funny. I just wanted to... <laughs> that's really funny. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. So somebody, either post-processing or live, is deciding when to have the screen go like this. Um, and obviously this is way more legible. Although, come on, it's, it's pretty legible. Let me just go back five seconds. This is decently legible here. I'm doing full screen in my um, in my office here. I mean, I would say this is decently legible, but this is like, whoa! I can man, I can read every single little nook and cranny of this. Um, so this is really interesting, right? So it sounds like he's really trying to use um, an example where really paying attention to this stuff matters. And so this sounds like a decimal place problem in that in that fourth bullet. It sounds hilarious. The wrong place. It's something that I kind of want to emphasize. When I say, you know, it's really useful to get yourself a real calculator and not do calculations on your mobile phone. Oof. Oof, man. That's fighting words for some people. <laughs> That's so interesting. I want to hear what he has to say. Because I think when you do calculations on your mobile phone, it's very easy to just be kind of... Did you see that? So I don't know if I can get in camera here. So people who do this. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. So people who do that tend to be... Um, how do I say it? Older? <laughs> so check and look and see if your students do calculators, whether it's their phone or calculators, whether they do it this way or they do it this way with their thumbs. Because uh, I've really noticed that I look weird when I use my calculator in class compared to my students who are all just using their thumbs uh, to do it. And so I, I noticed that he just went like this. So, uh, so I really wonder how this is being received. I don't think we're going to be able to tell, but I do uh, agree with his point that, um, well, you know, making sure you're using a tool that you can trust is good. And then I, my issue with what he's saying is, you know, the big, nice tactile, tactile buttons that you can feel and you can know you hit that decimal place, whereas with the phone, you have to sort of try to get it, especially the smartphones that don't have real buttons. It's just a touch screen it can be much harder. So let's keep going a bit too hasty you know you've got all your notifications and you're swiping all around and you just do the calculation real quick and it's very easy to make a mistake like that so when you're doing calculations i'd always recommend uh real calculators is much better the other point i'd like to emphasize with this is that for a calculation like this when we're moving decimal points around you really don't want to be leaning on your calculator this is something which your brain can do just as well as your calculator and if you get something like, wow, that, that seems like a lot of... So it's really interesting. There's a couple of points here, right? There's the decimal place, and then there's the going from the milligrams to the grams. And so, um, you know, the milligrams to the... This here is the same as this here, of course. And so this is really 100 times more. Um, so that that's one piece. is is Because what he's saying is, you know, come on, you can just do this in your head. 300 milligrams, that's you know, 0.3 grams, come on, you can just do that in your head. And it's quite often, especially those, you know, where should the decimal place go? You can you can trust your, your brain to do that kind of stuff. But I will say that that mixing the prefixes, the milli in here, it, you know, sometimes having it and sometimes not, um, is interesting. I wonder if when the people actually did this, they were using, you know, if they were thinking grams or thinking milligrams, because this in milligrams is 30,000. Whereas this in grams is 0 0.3, so this is this is maybe the better comparison. So caffeine, just because that's what your calculator tells you, just take a moment and uh, you know double check your math there. So let's uh, see how much kind of caffeine this is in terms of 
cups of coffee equivalent here. So how many cups of coffee does 30 grams of caffeine? Okay, so this is a quiz, you know, like a like a clicker question or something. I wonder if it's it's going to be. I wonder how the voting is going to go. But let's let's uh, see how I would do this. How many cups of coffee does 30 grams of caffeine correspond to? Now, if I didn't get the hint, honestly, I don't know how good I'd be at this. But the hint says, oh, 30 milligrams. Oh, okay, thousand. Bam. See. So we go from grams to milligrams. So the only thing that changed, you know, it's 30 and it's 30. So it's a factor of a thousand. So the answer is C. Oh my God. Woof. Man, those people must. I wonder what happened to those folks. All right, let's see how the uh, the quizzing goes here. P corresponds to. Let's take a look at the responses. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so nobody's going for A. Clearly, it's more than one cup of coffee. Whoa, I don't think this was there before. I wonder if there was some edit here to get people to be able to do this. Because this was really, really fast. There may have been an edit there, but wow, this is really a remarkable result here. Um, some people thinking maybe as much as 10,000, but the correct answer is actually C. So it's about as much as 1,000 cups of coffee. Wow. So very well done to everybody who gave that one a go, and especially if you got that one right. So. Just, uh, I think I'll pause here, uh, maybe maybe even end, it's getting a little long. Um, a couple of things, so showing the percentages is great. Not showing the actual count is probably smart if because people can realize, wow, a whole bunch of people aren't doing it or whatever. Very likely the system, you know, afterwards he could do that to try to figure out, you know, how, what the participation rates are. So, um, this is really interesting. You know, it's fascinating to think this is maybe the second week, I think is what he said, and they're they're really sort of hammering the things that are going to really, really matter using multiple examples. We saw from the, that there was something about a Mars something or other, Mars Climate Orbiter, and then just all of the different things that he has set up here. I really like that setup. I think taking the time to be able to add those markers is is really, really useful to students because then they can just jump to what, what they need, especially for something that's that's a 44-minute um, lecture. So um, really, really cool. I liked uh, the setup. I liked the, the focus on, on issues that really are important for so many things that the calculator conversation was also really, really interesting. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you have a great day. And remember, physics teachers are awesome.